Hey everyone, Gron K for the Flame Learning Channel. In the previous video on lens flares, you learnt about the new lens flare preset workflow in the Flame 2017 products. You could use any of the supplied presets, customize them, and save them as your own lens flare presets. We briefly touched on customization, but the focus was primarily on the presets workflow. In this video, we'll focus on the customization of lens flares using a wide variety of tools available in Flame. If you wish to follow along, just create an action composite and use the 2 up view with Alt 2. As in the previous video, create a light and add a default lens flare to the 3D composite. Obviously, you can load a preset and customize it, or you can create a lens flare from scratch and customize that as well. There is no lockdown starting point when it comes to customization, and at any time, you can save it as a preset through the Lens Flare Basics menu. Now, to help you understand Lens Flare customization, it's worth knowing the structure of the standard Lens Flare flow graph. At the top of the chain, you have the Lens Flare node, which controls the overall behavior of the Lens Flare. This is where you adjust global settings, occlusions, and presets. Beneath that, you have the Border Effects node. This controls the global behavior of the lens flare when it crosses over the center of the frame, as well as coming close or passing through the edges of the frame. And as I said, this is a global setting, but each lens element also has a border effects control to determine its behavior in combination with the global border effects controls. Now, the final aspect of the lens flare is the various lens element textures. There are five lens element textures in total, of which four are always used in the default lens flare. You have the iris texture, the streak texture, the glow texture, and the ring texture. You can use multiple lens element textures and even create your own combinations. You also have the ability to delete lens element textures if you want. Just look at some of the presets after this video to give you some inspiration. The fifth lens element texture is called the Lens Texture. You can find this by going to the Action Nodebin menu. Choose the Relighting tab, and you will find all the lens element textures here. So, to add the lens texture to the current lens flare, select the Border Effects node. Drag out the lens texture, and it will attach itself to the flow graph. So, the lens texture is designed to show imperfections in the camera lens as areas are lit up by the lens flare. Just double click on the lens texture and drop the inner brightness to a more acceptable level. Now, you can take as much time as you want going through each of the lens element textures and totally customizing the look of the lens flare. It's very flexible when it comes to look development. I want to point out that all the lens elements are procedurally generated with substance textures, so there is plenty you can create with them. I'll just hide the lens texture with H to make the next part visually clearer. Now, if you're looking for really accurate photorealism, procedurally generated textures might not be exactly what you're after. For example, if something was shot with a specific lens, the lens flare will have unique characteristics based on the glass. This might not be something you could recreate with a mathematical procedural texture. In fact, the best idea is to replace these digital textures with real lens flare elements. So, let's replace the procedural iris texture with a real lens element. Please ensure the iris texture is selected. Now, you have two options to do this either with Diffuse Maps or the Matchbox Texture Grids. The Diffuse Mapping method has been around for a while. So, you would load a lens texture into the media list as source media. Next, you would go to the Action Node Bin and drag out the Diffuse Map into the Action Schematic. This operation retextures the lens texture with a real lens element. And you can still use the Texture Map controls to tweak the element's look. Now, working with the diffuse mapping works fine. 
until you want to create a preset. Because the lens element media is loaded via the media list and is managed by the Flame ecosystem, you cannot save it out with the preset. If you tried, the preset would be incomplete as it relies on this image to be displayed correctly. So the alternative option when using real lens element textures is to use the Matchbox Texture Grid shaders. Delete the Diffuse Map object and let's use the alternative Matchbox workflow. Now Matchbox has a variety of uses including the ability to affect the texture processing pipeline. For example, you can select the iris texture again and switch to the Action Node Bin menu. Switch to the Matchbox tab. Now almost all of these shaders can affect the lens element textures used in the lens flare. So locate the dot shader and drag it into the schematic to affect the procedural iris texture. For graphic ideas or what some call texture bombing, this is really cool but that's hardly a realistic texture. So new to the Flame 2017 products is the ability to embed image data within a Matchbox shader. This can be anything including real lens elements. Go ahead and delete the dots Matchbox shader. Select the iris texture again and go back to the Matchbox nodes. This time press L on your keyboard to bring up the various nodes starting with L. Here you will find Lens Bokeh, Lens Optic, Lens Spatial, Lens Dirt and Lens Refraction. These Matchbox shaders are bundled with the Flame products and contain various examples of real lens elements. When you apply any of these shaders to any lens element texture, the procedural texture is replaced with a real lens element. So apply the Lens Bokeh shader to the iris texture. Double click on the Matchbox shader and start toggling through the dust options. There are many to choose from. And depending on how the Matchbox shader was written, you can have additional processing such as blurring and more. Just like diffuse maps, you can completely customize the look of the lens flare. But when it comes to saving a preset, the Matchbox shader with its textures are saved as part of the preset. This makes the preset totally portable even with all the customizations. Now on a technical note, the Lens Bokeh, Optic and Refraction shaders are specifically for elements that shine through the lens. This includes the iris, glow, streak and ring textures. They are all applied additively using the lens flare. However, the Lens Dirt and Spatial shaders are specifically for the texture or imperfections on the physical camera lens. They are added as an overlay when using the lens flare. So if you unhide the lens texture with the H keyboard shortcut, you can apply the lens spatial shader to the lens texture. So now you are using real lens elements as part of the lens flare customization. Finally for the advanced artists, if you have captured your own lens elements and want to use them in customizing the lens flare, it is possible by creating your own Matchbox Texture Grid shader and using it in action. For a quick start, go to the Matchbox Examples directory and locate the Grid Fetching Replace shader and all its associated files. You can copy the example, rename all the files, update the 9 tiles in the grid image with your lens elements and finally update the XML. This will all be covered in greater detail in a future video. I hope you enjoy customizing your lens flares and be sure to check out the other videos covering the features, workflows and updates to the Flame 2017 products. Comments, feedback and suggestions are always welcome and appreciated. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to the Flame Learning Channel for future videos.